Hi, my name is Abhinay Ramachandran, and I'm uh, going to be a freshman at the University of Pennsylvania next year. I was in the science internship program. The name of my project was Using Ultrafiltration to Improve the Sensitivity of the Urine Histoplasma Assay. Histoplasmosis is caused by the fungus Histoplasma capsulatum, and the fungus can mainly be found in the Ohio River and Mississippi River valleys. It mainly affects the respiratory system, but when, it's, um, when it affects other organs, it's called disseminated histoplasmosis, and it can be, be fatal if left untreated. Histoplasmosis is common among AIDS and other immunocompromised patients, and symptoms are similar to that of the flu. It's diagnosed by running a test on body fluids such as serum, blood, or urine, looking for the histoplasma capsulatum antigen. Testing urine is the most common practice, and this is done using a sandwich enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, otherwise known as an ELISA. A positive result is greater than or equal to 2.0 units concentration of the antigen. Our hypothesis was that ultrafiltration of the urine will increase the concentration of the antigen in weak positive samples from 1 to 2 units to over the cutoff point. Also, ultrafiltration will increase the sensitivity of the assay by converting weak positives into positives without decreasing the specificity. Negative samples also have to be treated to make sure they don't become positive as a result of the ultrafiltration. So first, we had to concentrate the specimen by ultrafiltration. We do this by loading 2.5 milliliters of the sample into filters, and then using a centrifuge to spin the samples until only 0.25 milliliters remain. This is an increase in concentration of 10 fold. By dividing the volumes of before ultrafiltration by after, a theoretical increase in concentration can be calculated. And we did the 10 times based on literature. Next, a sandwich ELISA is performed to compare two different filters of 5,000 5, uh, kilodaltons and then 10,000 daltons. And a sandwich ELISA, pro ELISA protocol is performed. First, uh, the reagents and the plate have to be brought to room temperature. Um, six calibrators need to be uh, gen used to generate a standard curve. And uh, this standard curve is a four parameter uh, lo logistic fit. And it'll be used um, to calculate the values of our samples. Here's an example of a four parameter logistic nonlinear regression model. And again, it's used for curve fitting analysis. Um, first, the assay is performed with known concentrations. And using these values, um, the, the concentrations of our substances can be determined. So then we go on with the sandwich ELISA protocol. Um, first, the capture antibody is already coated on the wells. After that, 100 microliters of urine. Um, this includes the before ultrafiltration, after ultrafiltration, the supernatant. And our control samples are added. And we incubate this for two hours at 37 degrees Celsius with shaking. After it's done incubating, we wash the plate three times with a wash buffer and add 100 microliters of the detecting antibody, which is the same as the capture antibody. Again, we incubate for two hours at 37 degrees Celsius. Here's a picture of a 96 weld plate that we use for this ELISA. After that, we wash the plate again three times with a wash buffer. We add 100 microliters of uh, enzyme-linked secondary antibody and incubate at 25 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. This enzyme-linked secondary antibody binds to the detecting antibody. After that, we add 100 microliters of uh, a substrate known as TMB, and we cover the plate with aluminum foil and incubate at 10 minutes at room temperature. This combines with the enzyme-linked secondary antibody to change color. And after that, um, we add uh, 100 microliters of stop reagent, and we can read the plate. So we compared two filters, uh, one 5 kilodaltons and one 10 kilodaltons. Um, these filters allow molecule molecules with a molecular weight equal to or less than the cutoff value to flow through the filter. So for example, the 10K filter allows molecules up to 10K to flow through. We chose the 5K filter based on literature, and we chose the 10K filter because the theoretical molecular weight of the antigen is from 20 to 600K. So theoretically, the 10K should allow more non-histoplasma proteins to flow through, reducing the amount of interference. So this is um, some data comparing the 10K and the 5K, and we found that the 10K is clearly superior because it showed higher concentration increases in our spike samples and lower non-specific signals in our healthy donor. 
after that, we tested our 10K. Uh, we used our 10K filter to test all the samples. Um, this is a sample of the data we received. Overall, we tested uh, CTD normal pool, uh, different spikes, uh, 14 healthy donors, 40 negatives, two weak positives, and a positive sample. Um, the designations that they had received were according to reference lab results. The CTD normal pool, uh, which should be negative, behaved the way expected to. Um, the spike samples, uh, once it was taken into account that the, sig the baseline signal caused by the CTD normal pool must be subtracted, after we took that into account, the spike samples um, performed really well, um, concentrating approximately the 10 times that we were looking for. All the healthy donor samples stayed negative, which is um, a positive for us. Uh, of the 40 negative samples, 37 remain negative after ultrafiltration, um, which is a strong result. And of the three that became positive, two had high baseline concentrations, so we think that's not the fault of the ultrafiltration. A third sample had a very abnormally high uh, increase in concentration that we are looking into, see what, what, what and why it happened. Um, the weak positives and positive samples, however, did not perform so well. All three remained negative after ultrafiltration, which was curious. And um, so we need to look into that. So overall, ultrafiltration looks positive as the spike samples did increase um, really well. However, more, te more testing needs to be done before we can determine the effectiveness. Another thing to consider for further testing is to try a filter with a higher molecular weight cutoff. Um, because the 10K was much better than the 5K, possibly a 20 uh, kilodalton filter would uh, be much better because this would reduce the amount of interference proteins. Um, finally, I would like to thank Bill Gibson, Kelly Zimmerman, Joseph Ustesh, Dr. Zhang, and Dr. Daly for interacting with me, teaching me a lot, and giving me an unforgettable experience in their lab. I would also like to thank Ms. Starling, Ms. Strickland, and the Office of Civic Education, and finally the Cleveland Clinic for giving me this opportunity.